Hey y'all, Rob from RM Woodcraft here. Um, months ago, I had made this console table, walnut console table, and I had a few hunks of walnut left over, so I decided to make a end table to uh, match the console table. So I already roughed out the top here. I got, I'm gonna get 14 inches out of this, 14 by 12 and a half for my top. I already got some epoxy in the knot there. And I'm gonna start on the tapered legs today. And since the legs are tapered, and I do have to make four of them, I wanna make um, templates to do it. Now, when I had done the console table, I also made templates for the legs. And what I found is when I made it out of this quarter inch MDF and I double sided taped them to the piece, when I try to get it off, these um, templates tend to break. I don't know if the tape is too sticky or I'm doing something wrong, but now I've decided to make all the templates out of um, quarter inch plywood. So we'll see how that goes. So, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so here I'm using my template to mark out my leg position on my walnut stock. It's, um, I think it's an inch and three-eighths walnut. It might be an inch and a half, but it's going to, the finished dimensions will be an inch and three-eighths. So I'm just marking four legs out, and then I'm going to cut them out using the track saw. Okay, now I'm using the uh, miter box to trim up the length of the legs. Um, you know, you could do this by hand or use the table saw, but it was just easier to use the miter box in this situation. So what happened here is one of my four legs, the grain, didn't really match the other three. So I'm um, milling down a piece of six quarter down to an inch and three eighths to get another leg out of it. Okay, now I'm putting my walnut that I have my leg pattern traced out onto into my track saw track table to cut it out using the track saw. Um, I could have used the pattern bit, but it's very messy. Um, the router sends chips all over the place and um, you have to make a couple of passes with it. I find for just cutting straight lines, the track saw works really great. It makes a really clean cut and it's fast, easy and less messy. Okay, here I'm marking out a piece of five quarter walnut and this is to get my four aprons that are going to sit between the legs around the edge of the table, you know, under the, under the table base. Um, one thing to consider when um, making these rough cuts is these aprons are going to have a tenon on it and generally my tenons are about three eighths of an inch and they're going to be, you know, there's going to be one on each side of the apron. So I'm cutting these roughly one inch longer to account for that. Okay, for whatever reason, I'm missing the thickness planing footage, but this is the piece of uh, four quarter from the previous segment, mill down to three quarter, and I'm now cutting the width of the apron out of it. I believe it's four inches. I did happen to find some footage of the final milling of the piece that I'm going to use for the drawer front. So again, this, this was originally um, four quarter. I'm milling it down to three quarter here. Yeah, and that board that I'm throwing behind it is just to reduce the, uh, the snipe. I don't find I get snipe on the front of the board, but for whatever reason on my planer I get snipe on the uh, back of the board and that second board keeps the cutter heads from coming down and causing the snipe. Now I'm mixing a little black epoxy up. Um, the previous epoxy fill wasn't flush with the surface, so I'm just mixing a little more to fill it in and get it flush with the surface. Okay, here's a little pro tip that you may find useful to sand my epoxy fill off of a walnut end table that I'm making and normally I would just jump in 
to the sanding straight away. But I um I heard this tip. I think it was I think it was from Keith Johnson. Not 100% sure. But before sanding, because it takes a while to sand the um, the epoxy off in it, and it does uh, clog up your paper and whatnot. Um, I heard this tip to use the card scraper. So I gave it a try on one piece and it worked pretty good. So I just want to show you guys. Uh, pieces aren't down very well. But you guys can see how nicely, how nicely that just takes the epoxy right off. And it doesn't take much time at all to get it flush with the wood and it saves a ton of time sanding and also it saves your sandpaper. There you go. So, card scrape before sanding. There you go. Thanks. Okay, here I'm cutting out one of the two pieces of stretcher that will sit um, above and below the drawer front. Uh, this will make more sense when you see the final assembly. Okay, I'm going to use the table saw to cut a 45 degree chamfer on the bottom edge of my table. So we'll get the table saw as close as we can. It doesn't have to be exact. That is great. Okay, now I'm going to run my tabletop through the table saw to get that chamfer that's going to be on the bottom of the table on either side of the, uh, the long grain. I probably could have done this with the track saw as well, but um, I don't know, I think the table saw just seemed easier. And that's really close to the camera. Okay, so my apron is going to be inset from the edges of the tables by three quarters of an inch. So I'm just chalking a three quarter inch line on the edge of the table. on both sides. Now this side, because of the angle, because of the chamfer that's cut on it, um, it's offset by a quarter of an inch. So this, so these two ends are going to have to come in one inch so that they match. the leg layout. Okay, so now I'm going to hold my table legs in the corners of the table where they're going to go and I'm going to mark them and I need these marks so that I can figure out the length of my aprons. And the reason why that is important is because I'm going to have to cut tenons on the aprons. and the aprons are going to have to be about three eighths longer on each side so that I can cut the tenon out of the apron. So this will give me the positions and then I can mark my aprons accordingly. And if that doesn't make sense, it will make sense when you see it. Okay, now that I have my table leg locations marked out on the bottom of my table, I'm going to hold my apron up to it and mark the leg position on my apron and this way I'll know that this is the inside of the legs and I'll need to leave three-eighths more this way and three-eighths more this way to cut my tenons out of my apron so they can fit into the mortises that will be on the legs. Okay, here I have my dado stack set up on my table saw and a secondary fence so that my workpiece doesn't rub against the fence as I'm clearing the material out. I'm using my miter gauge um, to 
to keep it at 90 degrees and I'm making two passes to remove the material to create um, the tenon on the board. So I, I do two passes on one side, flip the board over, do two more passes, that creates my tenon. Then I rotate the board um, 180 degrees and repeat the process to create the tenon on the other side. And then I repeat the whole process again on the other three boards from my apron to create the tenons for all my apron pieces. Okay, so normally when I cut the shoulders on my tenons, I usually just use the dado stack in my table saw. But since um, I'm doing a drawer, some of these uh, aprons have different size tenons, and it's just easier to cut them by hand with the flush trim saw than to change the settings on the table saw. Alright, so let's get into it. Okay, so cutting this with the flush trim saw is pretty straightforward. Just get lined up on your line. Make sure you hold the saw um, perpendicular to your piece. And there we go. Do the second shoulder. And then for this cut, um, you have to be a little bit more careful that you don't get your corners of your face, but it's pretty simple. Okay, there we go. And that little bit, that little bit there, we'll just clean that up with the chisel, no problem. Okay, now I'm just using a sharp chisel to remove the extra material that was left behind when I sawed the, uh, the shoulders away from the tenon. Um, I'm just going to repeat this on all my boards just to clean it up so it's flush. So I just realized I made a pretty big mistake. So all of my tenons that go into my legs are about two and a half inches. All except for the front that's getting the drawer. So this is getting just a little half inch tenon on the top of the apron and the bottom of the apron and the drawer goes in the middle. Now the mistake I made was that I cut both sides of my leg for a two and a half inch tenon. So the good news was I just, I took one of my cutoffs and I cut a piece of it and I glued it into the mortise and you can see it right here. It's not the best of matches, but it doesn't matter that much because it is going to be covered with the top apron, the bottom apron, and then the drawer is going to close. So you really need, the only time you could possibly see it is if the drawer is out of the piece. As long as the drawer is in the piece, you'll never see this. Um, but yeah, sometimes, sometimes you just go a little too fast without thinking ahead and, and that's what happens, but situation fixed. Okay. So we're all set up to do our mortise and the leg to receive the tenon for the apron. Now, when I first started making furniture and mortising, I was using a regular butt chisel to do the mortising. And, and it works, but I had since seen a video, and I think it was by Stumpy Nubs on chiseling, and that's where I learned about a mortising chisel. And what makes this better is this wide face here. The, the butt chisel is beveled on the edges, so it really doesn't have a flat edge. And what this lets you do is this wide edge lets you seat it against the mortise walls and make a nice flush straight line throughout your mortise as you work it back. Um, so 
yeah, it's just a lot easier with this. Plus, you know, the thicker metal, um, you know, it, it takes more of the beading. But, uh, I mean, it goes, if you chisel sharp, it goes through this walnut pretty easily. So let's do it. Okay, here we go. So when I start my mortise, I like to move off the end line just a hair. Because what usually happens is when you start your cut, the bevel on the chisel pushes it back. So you don't want to go past your line. So that's why I started a little forward of my line. And then you can go back and clean it up once there's some room for the chisel to work in. So at first, just take little bites just so you build build a hole where your wood can move into without distorting the uh, the mortise. So now that I got that wedge established, I can start working back a little more aggressively. And I'm just pushing this. This is maple. This is a uh, dark maple and I'm oh, sorry maple this is walnut and I'm just using a little bit of pressure and it's cutting right through this no problem but you can see now how my chisel is working back in a nice straight line because this nice wide face is riding against the walls of the mortise. Now you can see how, how clean the, the side walls are. All right, so this is basically there is, that's all there is to it. Just keep working back now. I had a line on here, I'm gonna to have to draw another one. So I go over to my my tenon, I'll mark a depth on my chisel so I know I'm going to the right depth while I'm doing this. And I'll just continue working back until I get to the end and clean the ends up and that's it. So for the rest of this, I'll just uh, I'll speed it up. Okay, the mortise is all cleaned up, all bandaged up, and a little, a little tight, but pretty good fit. Okay, so the end table is upside down and all mocked up, squared up, and ready to be glued up. So let's get into it. Okay, so I think what I've decided to do here for the glue up, instead of gluing the whole table up with the corner clamps um, and risk having these legs twist on me and um, coming out of square, because it's, it's really hard to keep everything straight with the corner clamp. It kind of, it, it doesn't give exact even pressure everywhere, and these, these legs tend to want to cock like this which opens up this gap here so i think what i've decided to do is i'm gonna glue it up as components so i have half here i got a little spacer down here just to keep the legs um spaced the right way i'm gonna clamp the end here and then i'm going to put a call on the top and clamp that call to the table to keep the leg from twisting. All right, so let's uh, let's do it up. Okay, so I'm just using original tight bond for this glue up. I'm putting it mostly on the tenon, a little bit on the shoulders, but not too much because I don't want it to squeeze out onto the show faces because that's just going to cause more work to clean it up. 
Sorry about the uh, elbow cam there. All right, so get this here. The wet rag to get that squeeze out cleaned up before I clamp it. Okay, so one clamp on the front here, just minimal pressure, it doesn't need to be all that tight, just so you get a little bit of squeeze out, just making sure the top is flush I'm gonna slide this over here I'm gonna put a call on the top to keep it from twisting just clamp this down to the table clamp it down to the table like this actually oops Okay, so my two light components are out of clamps, and now I'm going to set them on the, ta on the table base, just as a flat platform to glue them up. So a little glue on the mortise. I already put some glue on the tenons um, off camera, just so I could do it faster without it drying up on me. This is the back, this is up, so it's one, this is the rear leg, put a little glue on there, bring it up, then turn this a little bit. Just looking on my pieces for the arrows so I can tell which direction to place it, whether it goes up or down. So this piece goes like this. And then this piece goes like this. And then this is my drawer front that I'm just going to use as a spacer right now. Okay. And now I'm going to throw my framing clamp on here, my picture framing clamp. So there we go. Okay, as you guys saw, I was having an issue with that picture framing clamp. It was just, it was twisting and it was just hard to manage. So I ended up using some trigger clamps and some uh, F style clamps and that went much easier. Um, it was just, you know, with that picture framing clamp, it was twisting and it just wasn't staying in place. So this was much better. So we're all on glue and uh, we'll be out soon. Okay, the end table is out of glue, and I'm gonna make the uh, the drawer tracks now. So it's just gonna be a simple track, uh, wood track. I'm gonna go from this leg over to the leg in the front, and I'm just gonna glue up a piece of um, three quarter inch birch plywood as the runner for the track. Okay, the track rail measures 8 and 7 eighths, so I'm just going to mark that and then cut it on the chop box. Ok, 
okay with the glue. Fit there. Fit there. And I'm just going to keep this flush with the bottom. It is a bit humid out, so I'm going to leave about a sixteenth of a gap on the end in case this walnut shrinks a little. The uh, the birch plywood's pretty stable, so that shouldn't go anywhere. Just going to put a little, little glue on the edge here. And then I'm going to clamp it to the top. Okay, to make up the drawer box, and this is going to be my drawer front, I'm going to use some half inch birch plywood and some three quarter inch birch plywood. So I'm going to use the half inch for the front and the back of the drawer, and then I'm going to use three quarter for the sides with a dado cut out to accept the half inch and in the front and the back. And to cut the dado, I'm just going to do it on the table saw with my dado stack set up. Okay, with my drawer box rough, roughed out, I am going to cut a dado on the bottom of all of the boxes to accept my quarter inch plywood bottom. Okay, I have my drawer box all locked up with the panel on the bottom. Now I'm just going to take it apart and glue it and tack it with some pin nails. Now when I glue this up, I'm just going to glue the, um, the ends of the box. I'm not going to glue the dado where the panel is going to sit. I want that to float in there for uh, seasonal expansion and contraction. All right, I have my drawer face in the vise here and I'm just taking my um, plane and just shaving about I don't know, 30 seconds off with each pass um, just because it wasn't, it didn't have nice spacing in the opening. So I'm just taking a little bit off to fix the spacing in the opening. Okay, to set my drawer face in the opening, I'm going to set it in the opening. I'm going to just shove a few pieces of uh, playing cards under there. Um, you know, you can use whatever, flashcards, playing cards, shims, but I think the playing card trick is the easiest. Do one on each side here. And then, you know, some people will use double-sided tape. Some people will use the blue tape and super glue. Um, 
I'm just going to tack it with a 23 gauge brad nailer from behind. Two tacks. And then I'll take it out. And drill my holes. So I want to round over these outside edges on my drawer box. And the best way to do it is probably with the router table. But my router table is full of stuff and I'm feeling lazy. So handheld it is. Okay, I gave the whole end table a water pop and then one more sanding at 180. And now to apply the finish, Rubio Monaco Pure. I'm not going to go into detail on the finishing, but with all of the uh, oil wax finishes, um, you know, you just rub it into the wood till the pores are saturated and then you wipe it all off and let it dry and repeat the process if you want a second coat. If you want a detailed step-by-step -step on how to apply a hard oil finish, um, I'll link some of my other finishing videos in the description. And also there's a plenty of content out there on YouTube on finishing with hard oils. I guess the best tip for the uh, hard oil finish is you can't wipe too much off after you apply it. If you leave a little too much on, if you don't get it all off, it gets, it leaves like a sticky residue, hazy looking mess behind. So it's best to, you know, wipe as much as you can off once you apply it and it saturates. Okay, just taking the front panel of my drawer off so that I can uh, drill the hole for my pull knob. So I'm just going to uh, do a two diagonal lines to find the center. And then drill my hole. It's a little hard to see on that dark walnut, but right there. Okay, I'm not sure which pull I like better, but I'm going to go with this one initial, initially because this one has a little stud in it right here to keep it from spinning on the piece and that little stud would definitely show if I use this if I put this one on first didn't like it and then switch to this so I'm gonna go with this one first and uh, see if we like the color and the shape if not we can switch to something else possibly this but going with this one Okay, let's see if we can pop the drawer front back on. Line it up. <laughs> A little harder than I thought it was going to be. Oh, I see what's happening. I think I have to make the, the divot for my screw a little bigger. Okay, so actually the issue wasn't the that the divot wasn't big enough. 
the issue is this drawer front sits slightly proud of the top of this box. It's about a quarter inch higher than the top of the box. Therefore, this hole shouldn't have been centered. It should have been raised slightly higher. So that's what I got to do now. Of course, it's going to be harder than I'd like. Okay, I think I'm going to switch to a Fossner bit. All right, switch to a 3 8 Fossner bit because the Fossner bit has the little um, spike on the front that will hold the drill bit, uh, the drill, the, the drill bit in place. If I could speak, and uh, not let the bit wander around like a twist bit was doing. Let's see how that fits. Okay, much better. Okay, I can't get this screw gun straight up and down in the drawer because it's too small, so I got this little angle attachment. That works quite nicely. does like to try to twist in your hand a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's see how she fits. Oh, there's a little... <laughs> I have a little... A little piece that swings down in there to keep the drawer from pulling it out all the way. So I have to fold that up, stick the drawer in, pull it back down. Sorry, I'm doing this with one hand, camera in one hand, and there we go. So that's down. Now the drawer won't pull out all the way and slides back in. Beautiful. I think it looks good. Okay, that is a wrap. Okay, thanks for watching my end table build. I'll leave you with um, some still shots. And thanks for watching as always. <laughs>